guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about inflammation. Now I'm sure uh, you guys must be familiar with the term because we use inflammation term every now and then, right? If there is a tissue injury or wound, there will be redness of the tissue, the redness of the area, there will be swelling, the person will be feeling pain. All that we say is inflammation, right? So today we will see what exactly happens when there is inflammation, when there is tissue injury. And if I want to put it in very simple way, what is an inflammation? It is a response uh, to the tissue injury. When our immune system responds uh, to tissue injury or tissue damage is when the inflammation uh, occurs, right? So we'll take an example. We'll take a diagram and we'll try to understand what all happens when there is uh, an inflammation. Now, when there is an inflammation, there are certain uh, signs that we observe, right? That is the redness of the affected area. Then there is uh, swelling at that particular region. The person will feel pain at that area. And the temperature is higher at that particular region. And there is one more uh, thing added over here, and that is the loss of function of that particular uh, region temporarily so we'll see all this one by one why is the redness there why swelling is there why the person feel pains why the temperature is more in this particular region why there is loss of function all will be addressed one by one so let's take the diagram and start with the process now let's say for example you know you get prick by a nail okay not such a good thing but let's just assume we get pricked by a nail okay let's be together in this so we get a prick by a nail what happens is we'll get uh, tissue damage in this particular region so cells of uh, that particular region would be damaged right that's the first thing that would happen damage of that particular area right so just let's write down also there is tissue damage that has occurred cells some of the cells at that particular region are damaged so all the proteins or the material of the cell would be released right now it's uh, not more likely that the nail was sterile it's it's not that likely the organisms would be present on it right so let's say for example there are certain bacteria present on this particular nail if it was rusty it's going to be really difficult and that introduces some bacteria in the tissue Sometimes it, it happens, right, that you might even have something sterile pricking you, okay, that also can happen in that case, there is no presence of bacteria. But in this case, there is nail that has caused tissue damage and it has also released the bacteria. So the second thing, that is the bacteria that is introduced in our tissue. So these two things are actually a trigger point for inflammation okay this is going to trigger the inflammation what happens is now we are talking about skin uh, cells right the tissue would have mast cells let me change the color it would have the mast cells and dendritic cells present at this particular region right now what happens is mast cell and dendritic cells would have the receptor that can actually sense the uh, tissue damage because it is going to release the proteins and the cell material if the receptor that are present on dendritic cell and mast cell would bind with some of the uh, cell proteins or the cell molecule that is going to trigger the mast cell and dendritic cell also there is bacteria present right so if these cells can bind with the bacteria that also would trigger the uh, cells now now one more information that we should know is this bacteria how they are recognized is uh, if you remember we were talking about antibodies and there we had seen that there are specific molecules on bacteria that are uh, recognized by our immune system and these specific uh, molecules they are called PAMP okay which stands for pathogen associated molecular 
patterns okay pamps and one example uh, of pamp is lps lipopolysaccharides right so they can uh, be recognized these molecules can be recognized by mast cell or dendritic cell doesn't matter which one is binding first it's the mast cell or dendritic cell is it the bacteria or the protein from the uh, damaged cell any of this is going to trigger the inflammation and actually there is no specific uh, no, there is no order as such like the first mast cell will go or dendritic cell it doesn't happen in any cascade reaction manner anything could trigger the inflammation so this is in short the first stage injury has happened introduction of bacteria mast cell and dendritic cell can sense the presence of bacteria or damaged tissue and will get activated now if the mast cell is activated we know that the mast cells would have granules vesicles that contain one of the most important substance called histamine so if the mast cells are activated it is undergoing degranulation and it will release histamine in this particular region and histamine is going to act as a signaling molecule that has uh, certain effects to carry out we'll we'll have a look at that just in a moment so if the mast cell is activated remember histamine is released and if the dendritic cell is activated it is going to release chemokines you know specific uh, let's say for example some cytokines interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor so it is going to release the chemokines and the main function over here of this chemokine is to act as a chemo attractant for neutrophils it is going to carry out the chemotaxis that means uh, you know the higher the amount of chemokines there will be a gradient right somewhere over here there will be very less chemokines but as you go on there is tissue injury so the gradation the level of chemokine has increased so it will cause chemotaxis okay again we'll come back to it just in a moment so remember mast cells get activated release of histamine dendritic cells gets activated release chemokines main function over here would be chemotaxis now the second phase what will happen now so what this histamine will do very interesting and very important thing the first thing that it will do is it will cause the vasodilation okay it will increase the diameter of blood capillary of you know the nearest blood capillary of that affected area and why it has to do so because we need now a lot of soldiers our immune system cells to come at this affected area and help fight against the pathogen help in repairing the area so you want lots and lots of blood cells blood components to rush through the area and that would be possible if there is a, you know a bigger area if there is increase in the diameter so there will be vasodilation that means increase in the diameter of blood capillary which is present in the near most region of the affected area and it will also increase the capillary permeability now what is this let's just have a look so what histamine will do it will bind to the receptor on the nearest uh, capillary and it will cause vasodilation that means increase in the diameter so that a lot of our cells can easily blood cells and blood components can come at this particular region and it will also cause increase in the capillary permeability the gaps between the endothelial cells of this capillary is more now right because it has anyways uh, dilated so there are gaps now between the endothelial cells of the capillary so what happens is diameter is going to help you know increase diameter is going to help for rush of all the cells and proteins that we need these gaps would actually help the uh, neutrophils specifically to the area where the bacteria is present so what happens is this neutrophil would squeeze out from this capillary into the affected area okay 
it will squeeze out from the affected area now this mechanism is not as simple as that you know it's it's very wonderful uh, there will be certain adhesion molecules that will get expressed on the endothelial cell and that would help the neutrophil to bind to this uh, cells and it will start rolling through the cells and wherever uh, the gap is there it will squeeze through the gaps now this squeezing through when it is coming from capillary to the tissue that process is called diapedesis okay fancy word but important that we know it this process of squeezing it is escaping from capillary to the affected area is called diapedesis it it means to leap through okay or it is also called extravasation which means escape from capillary to the uh, tissue or simply it is called immigration also so remember this uh, neutrophils when they uh, squeeze through from capillary goes to the affected area that movement is diapedesis or extravasation or immigration and this helps you know you remember uh, i said that dendritic cells releases chemokine and they act as a chemo attractant they help in chemotaxis that helps the neutrophils they 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 act as a guide these molecule for neutrophils as in you know where to come exactly so this chemotaxis is going to help uh, for neutrophil to come at this particular area now neutrophil if it comes what it is going to do it's a phagocytic cell so it is going to it will start phagocytosis of bacteria that's what we want right so one by one they will start you know lots and lots of uh, neutrophils will come in the region and they will start uh, phagocytosis of the bacteria now from this gap it is not only the neutrophils that is coming out this this gap will also allow the fluid lots and lots of uh, protein rich fluid to escape from the capillary and that would bring lot of important proteins that we need at this particular region let's say for example it will bring in complements it will bring in uh, clotting factors now see there is this vasodilation increase in the permeability of the capillary causes lots and lots of cells to come at this area there is a lot of protein rich fluid that has come to this particular region there is a lot of dead bacterial material will be there that wbcs will be there all that accumulation is what we see as the formation of pus that is what makes the pus we don't like to see it i know but it's a good thing that you have pus you know that means the cell the body is actually fighting against uh, whatever has happened it is actually working towards the betterment of the tissue so that's what causes the pus formation and as i said if by chance uh, the thing that pricked you the nail was sterile it could have been the sterile pus without the uh, bacterial content in it otherwise it's not normal pus will be formed because uh, pus would be nothing but it's a protein rich fluid that would have a dead wbc okay that causes the pus formation it's a sign that uh, you know immune system is fighting now there are a lot of proteins that has come in this region i said like complements and clotting factors what are the role of these proteins they are very very important complements if you remember they are very important they are generally inactive but once they sense uh, there is bacteria there is tissue injury they are going to get activated because so complements would get activated and one important function they would do is they will cause the cell lysis you remember mac formation we have talked about uh, complement pathways so there will be cell lysis by complement they would lyse the bacterial cell also they will cause opsonization of bacteria right and uh, they also act as a uh, chemo attractant for uh, causing lots and lots of neutrophils at this uh, affected area so chemotaxis also would be one of the function of complements so they are going to help us in many way like uh, to get rid of the bacteria also to call other cells for help and very important function that would actually complements would actually uh, you know it's interlinked it will help in activation of clotting factors 
for blood clot formation now that is very important it is going to activate the clotting cascade it is going to help in that so that the blood clot is formed now what happens is blood clot formation is very important it is going to help us in two way first of all when the blood clot is uh, made means the fibrin strands are made these fibrin strands are actually going to make a wall kind uh, formation you know it's actually sealing off the affected area so that uh, this infection would not spread and of course it is going to uh, you know seal the wound so blood clot uh, formation of fibrin strand is going to seal off the wound it will seal the wound and it will prevent the spreading of the infection right that is also very important and very much needed now when all these things is happening lot of mediators of inflammation has come into picture right lot of cytokines chemokines lot of things proteins are activated and one of them would be kinase okay these are the small peptides that also get activated they'll be inactivated but when there is tissue injury that will get activated they are present in blood plasma now one of the kinin called breda kinin this is the reason you know bradykinin what it does is it goes and bind to the skin receptors and it causes pain okay bradykinin is the reason why we feel pain at the affected area okay that is a function very important function of bradykinin now you might wonder why do we need pain a lot of things unwanted things are happening over here there's injury our immune cells are dying bodies fighting in that why do you need pain you know why why is this substance causing something very uncomfortable if you uh, think about it you know pain is a good thing again you must be wondering why because if there is pain in the affected area you tend to protect that area right you become more protective towards your wound and you will you know not let it get hit again or not you will not make it worse anymore right imagine you don't have pain you don't take care of the region where it is where there is tissue injury where there is wound it will take so much long for immune system to repair it because you might by mistake Uh, you know uh, wound it again you are not covering it you are not taking care of it it will prolong the repair procedure it can become worse even so it is very important that you have some kind of sensation which gives you feeling to protect that area so pain is actually serving a uh, protection role so when there is pain respect it it's it's good to have pain not unbearable of course but it's good that there is pain so you tend to uh, protect that particular area So now let's see why these uh, five signs uh, that we observe in inflammation why are they present the first one is we observe redness right because uh, look at this particular region there is vasodilation so lots and lots of the blood flow is really high there is a rush of blood cell that causes the redness or rubor that's what is called that causes the redness of that particular affected region and because there is increase in the uh, capillary permeability lots of the cells here you saw there is uh, at this particular region lot of protein cells and all that has accumulated at this particular region lot of dead material is made so accumulation of product is so much over here that causes swelling of that particular region or tumor or edema that's what we see so swelling is because of the uh, proteins the dead cells the materials or the immune cells that are rushing to the area and getting accumulated over there and because there is high rush there is increased rush of the uh, blood cells that is responsible for increased heat or calor in this particular region and pain as i said bradykinin is responsible for the pain or dolor and there is loss of function temporarily because you have injured let's say for example this pricking was in your hand in your finger you have injured that particular particular area you it, it's paining over there so you might restrict movement of your hand or finger uh, for a while so in that sense there is loss of function or at that particular region now whatever we saw is a uh, local inflammation you know at that particular region where the injury was there it is restricted to this particular region so this is an example of local inflammation 
if at all you know unfortunately the infection was very large it was the bacteria could have uh, spread through your blood stream and there is or, or maybe there was a severe tissue injury including multiple uh, tissues in the body this whole thing would be at a large scale in the body and that would become the systemic inflammation which is much more dangerous right we are not talking about that but just understand the difference between local inflammation and systemic inflammation so that's all and this is just an overview there is much more in detail to this 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 still looks more it's not that complicated when we just break it down and understand this is a release that is activated and this is what happens but there are a lot of things simple let's say for example as i said neutrophils just coming out of uh, uh, this capillary into the tissue for that itself there are a lot of adhesion molecule expressions and binding of molecules that we need to look into detail but we are not going in all that because it can be I have seen a whole book of thousands of pages just on inflammation. It is that much beautiful detailed mechanism. But overview of inflammation is what I have shown today. What happens? There is injury, how the cells get activated, what all main events that occurs in the inflammation which causes all these signs of inflammation that we observe. So that's all for now. I hope this video was helpful. Do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and I will see you next time. Until then keep learning.